Welcome back to Captain of Industry, another episode today of our Let's Play series. Don't hesitate to check in the video description below if you want to find the link to the full playlist. And oh boy, is that a big one today. If you're following the series closely, you may be thinking, wait, I don't see any changes. Well, you are completely right. This is actually the picture from the end of the last episode. I wanted to do a very quick recap with the From 2. So this was exactly how we left at the end of the last episode. We had our 18 farms over here. We had all of our food production that was going here and going down into this huge market here. We were providing all types of food, but not really with great ratios. I was just overproducing basically everything. We had our city over here, mostly level 2. We have our production over here of copper, iron, steel, glass, as well as concrete, all going into here to make construction parts, maintenance, research, and of course, recycling. We have a great recycling right now with edX 90%, if I'm not mistaken. So it's great in particular for the iron. Here we have a water connection and a wastewater. We have our electrical production with high pressure steams and low pressure steams all going into those wheels over here. We have an old water production over here that's based on basic distillers creating a lot of exhaust, not super optimal. And finally here we have our ultimate diesel production. We're using stage one, two and three, transforming everything, making some plastic, some rubber. But that's how we left the last episode. And here is that same island. A few years have passed. Okay, I'll be honest, 50 years have passed. But you can see some major changes. I've had a lot of fun. Let's dive right in. Let's start over here. We still have our ultimate diesel production. Didn't change anything at all over here. But here made major changes. We used to have over here the old basic distillers to make some water. Really wasn't great. And we used to also have the old electric production. Now instead of the high pressure turbine, we're using the high pressure turbine level 2. Similarly for the low pressure turbines and of course for the power generation there. You are using 500 kilowatts of mechanical power and only getting 360 of electricity. Now you're using 3 megawatts, you're getting 3 megawatts. So no loss there, so that's a huge, huge boost. On top of that, of course, this is a lot more powerful, a lot more compact. The high pressure turbine, the level 1, was creating 1 megawatt of power, right? The level 2 is creating 2 megawatts. So it's a lot more efficient. And with that, we can actually reach quite easily the maximum connected shaft. I have a basic tutorial video on my channel about electricity, where I, where I covered that the maximum throughput for shaft is actually 12 megawatts. And again, with the high pressure turbine of level 1, I mean, this takes a while to reach you need 12 of these, for example, or 8 of these plus 4 of these. Now with the high pressure turbine level 2, this is actually quite easy. You just need 4 of these plus 2 low pressure, you are 12. So you can't have these ones and these ones uh, as a long line, you need two lines. Power used to be 8 megawatts and that was getting, becoming a problem, obviously. You can see I'm using definitely more than that now often. So now we've moved to 24, 12 and 12. On top of that, we have a production that doesn't require any water. We don't need to produce the water. We're actually making water. Uh, you can see here I have a full storage of water because this is water positive. We are of course taking a bit of water from the sea, but this is fine, in, right, this is unlimited. And actually with that, we're creating more water. The only thing we do need here is coal. We have some boilers that are using coal. Of course, in the future, we could use something else. We could use biomass, we could do animal feed, we could also use the gases one, and later on, we could use the electric one. But anyway, for now, I'm using boiler coals. I have four of these. Why four? Because this is 48, and each of these is 48. So we have four of these, that's linked to four of these. And then this creates 48 of steam low, and therefore we need two of these because this is 96. Again, with that, that goes into the power generators. These ones are great. And then I have two flywheels. And then we have a lot of those desalinators. But before we talk about those desalinators, over here, I do have one exhaust scrubber. Why? Because we create, remember, some exhaust over here, 36. So one is enough. And with that, we are also using a bit of water, which again, we are creating the system, so it's all good. 
creating some sulfur and some carbon dioxide, some steam low. You can do things with the carbon dioxide, but for now I'm just sending into the atmosphere. This is those two exhausts over here or smokestacks. And we're creating steam low. So don't confuse that here we're creating steam low. As you see, we're creating steam depleted. And this is why I actually have sort of two types of desalinator. I have two over here, which are focused on my steam low. And then over here, I have many that are focused on the steam depleted. So I have two of these that are taking the steam low, 12 of these, which is why we have two, and creating some water, 24 water uh, and some brine. So as you see, this is already 12 getting into 24. So that is the great ratio. And on top of that, I have 16 over here of those steam depleted one, right? Because this is 12 and this is 96 times two, right? So that's why we need 16 of these. That's a lot, I know, but that's fine. It takes just a bit of seawater, only six, which is why also we only have, I mean, we have four of these, it's because I have doubled it, right? So I just need two of these for this whole thing over here. And as you can see, this is creating 15 water. So to recap here, we need 48 water times four. That's 192. Here we have 24. So 216. We need 216 to run this in terms of water. Now with all of this, how much are we making? We are actually making 288. So as I said, we are water positive by 72. This is creating 72 water per minute, basically for free. Or the only cost, let's say, is again this coal. The other thing we're creating is a lot of brine. You can do a couple of things with brine. Remember, you can make some salt, you can make some chlorine. Well, I actually have way too much of that already from other places. So here we're actually just dumping completely all of the brine. And this is those three over here. Three are enough for both of these. As always, I'll post the layout in construction mode in my Discord community if you want to check it out. But a quick you know, description is basically I have my seawater over here. This is the red pipe going all the way. And then I have my steam at level zero. That's the two things that are going you know, from the top to the bottom. And then here, go to the bottom, we have the water and the brine. One at level zero, one at level um, one. We have the coal coming on the side, going over here. As we said, all of the water is coming this way, right? There's a pipe balancer over here and also a pipe balancer over there. It's more important. This one is to make sure that the water goes first into those boiler and into the exhaust scrubber before doing anything. And yet that's pretty much it about our new power generation. A lot more efficient, a lot more compact, also a lot more integrated and modular. Right. I don't really need a lot of things. Again, this is the only thing needed is the coal. This is a lot more powerful than before. Don't hesitate if you have any comments, questions, put in the comments below or to join the Discord community to chat about it. You may be wondering about my old water plant that was here with the basic distillers. Why is that water? You know why I don't need that water anymore? Well, actually, we don't didn't really need it anymore for a couple of reasons, because that water used to be used for a couple of things. It used to be used for the distillers over here. But now this is also fully autonomous. We have those thermal desalinator over here. This is also water positive. It used also to be used in the farms that were here a long time ago. Of course, now those farms have been moved completely over here and they have their own water production over there. It was also used for my electricity, but as we said now, you know, this is of course using this. And lastly, it was also feeding water to my population. You may have realized that this water is not here anymore and also the wastewater is not over here anymore because I've moved it on the other side. Where here, I've created a mini lake. The mini lake is not perfect because of the type of resources I used. Sometimes, you know, I was using waste. Sometimes I was using dirt. It's a lot better if you want to do something like this to only use rock. Why? Because rock goes really straight versus this, as you can see, is not really straight. Um, so sometimes it can create a bit of problem. But as you can see, it is still pretty much working quite well. Where on a small piece of land like this, I can put a lot of those sea pumps and liquid dumps. And then I can do the same over here, same over here, same over here. So yes, this is where we've moved now the water facility and a wastewater treatment, which is also a lot more efficient, a lot more organized. 
and we've also advanced to the next level. We used to take some wastewater or some sand and some chlorine to make a bit of water and sludge. Now we're using that same amount of wet wastewater, still some chlorine a bit more, but as I said before, making tons of chlorine anymore, that's not a problem. And we're making something new, which is the filter media. We talk about it. And with that, we're making more water and more sludge. The more water is really important because uh, this continues to increase. We know we're almost at 200, which is also why you can see I've put a red pipe now. Because I know I'm going to go above the 200 of a blue pipe very soon. But yeah, this is creating more water, so it's really great. I've put two of them because yes, we have passed the 160. So we need two of them now. And this is creating this water that's going, as I said, feeding back into here, but also some sludge and going over here into those anaerobic dig digester. And this is creating fuel gas and compost. I'm sending the fuel with a bit of oxygen from here to make even more diesel. You know, can never have enough diesel. That's always great to have more putting it here, then that diesel can be used for many things. And then the compost is going over here. What's great about the compost, you may not know that, is you can actually dump it. To make sure that you dump the compost, you need to go over here, click on your vehicle management, and here you can add the compost. It's usually not there at the beginning, but if you want it to be able to be dumped, you just click over here and then it will be dumped. You can see some over here, some there. So yes, we are using to dump it because you could also turn it into fertilizer, organic fertilizer, but I'm going to tell you what I'm doing for fertilizer. So I don't need this. I think this is for me easier to just dump it. I don't have to deal with it. And I prefer to have something dedicated for the fertilizer. But as we said, we also need those filter media. This is what we're creating over here. It takes some gravel, some sand and some coal. It's not that easy to make, but as you can see, you know, this is creating 36 and we only need eight. So this is definitely enough. I've just here, you know, a very small thing with a bit of coal, a bit of sand, here a bit of rock and a crusher to make that gravel. And lastly, the chlorine is coming from here. We have those three uh, electrolyzer. I don't need three, but it's also in case I need some chlorine for something else. And this is linked to this other desalination plant here which is what I will call actually a basic desalinator plan because it's mostly running on steam high pressure. It's not running on low or depleted like I did on the other side, just running on pure normal steam high. We have here those boiler coals. Once again, it's four of these. So this is 48 and 4, 192 of steam. Each of these is using 12, so we can run 16. This is what you can see here. We have 16 of these. 16 times 48 of water, that's almost 800 of water per minute. This 800 is going to be using quite a few things, but before we talk about that, as always, we're creating a bit of brine. First, as we said, we can create some chlorine over here. We can also make a bit of salt. Why salt? Well, because salt is going to be used over here. We'll talk about that after. And in case this is full, then it can go out over here, which is going to be basically dumped. Now, in terms of the water, one big thing is, of course, for our population, you know, they need to drink, they need to shower. And now it's almost 200, as we said, so definitely need some water over here. But if you look at the pipe balancer where all the water comes, this is actually not the priority. You know, this, this one is the one going to the city. The priority is this one, which is once again the boilers, right? We need the boilers to work, so we need the water to go first there. Then when this is working, we can start using the water elsewhere which is first as we said our population here then another important one is over here it's going there and it's basically going to feed all of my food and lastly the what last water is going up over here what is this whole thing i know this looks crazy especially over here so many of those electrolyzer where well, they're creating hydrogen why hydrogen i'm using the hydrogen then to make some ammonia and then the ammonia is used to make fertilizer. I know you can of course make ammonia. For example, here sour water is creating ammonia. But to me, this doesn't work. Why? Because this is linked to my diesel. Because right now, for example, I'm producing a lot more diesel or I could produce a lot more diesel than what I'm using. 
Therefore, most of the time these things are stopped. And with that, that means I'm not creating salt water, which means I'm not creating this ammonia, which means I can't really rely on this for a sustainable fertilizer production. Versus with this, this is basically creating everything from scratch. The only thing I need is water. This is the only thing that this whole thing needs. And this water is sort of unlimited, right? The only thing again we need is basically some coal. So this is creating water and oxygen. I'm just sending the oxygen into the atmosphere. No pollution, that's not a problem. H2 is going here plus some nitrogen. Once again, nitrogen, very easy. It's just an air separator. You can send the oxygen into the atmosphere and take all of the nitrogen. And with that, we're making the ammonia. The ammonia goes up, goes into the storage here temporarily, and then goes down into all of those chemical plants where we add once again a bit of nitrogen, which is coming again from here, and a bit of water coming again from here to make that fertilizer. And that fertilizer is going up into that bit storage. So it is a lot of pipes, it does take some space, does take some electricity, but as we saw just before, my electricity is pretty much free. Again, the only thing that we're using here is coal. Everything else is self-sustaining. So having electricity, because yes, this is 100 kilowatts per, so this is a lot of electricity when it works um, at full speed, this, this is not a problem. And yeah, there's a lot of pipes, but it's actually not so hard. And you know, once again, just leave a couple of space in between and you'll be totally fine. Once again, I'd love to hear your thoughts about this layout. If you like it, if you have any thoughts, this is the chemical plants level one. I've actually just unlocked the level two, so I could also make it a bit differently. But honestly, it looks fine. I have the space. This is 12 per each. There are six of these, so that's 72. This is definitely enough for what I'm planning. So as we said, this water over here is quite critical. It's going to my population, it's going to my food. So I don't want this you know, to not work. And the only thing we need is coal. So I had to make sure that you know the coal was really there, so I created this coal storage over here. And of course, I have an alert to tell me when it's empty. We should actually put below 25, because now that it's full, if it goes below 25, I am already in trouble. And basically, what's happening is the coal is coming over here. If I remember correctly, in the last episode, this was actually a, a 4, upgraded to 6. And as you can see, you know this is coming over here. And there's a balancer right away to make sure that the priority is the coal must go this way. Go there first. And then later on, you can help in the city. But this is the most important thing. This cannot stop. Now let's talk about the other huge change. If you remember, I used to have my farms and my food production over here. We still have the farms. They have actually been upgraded. They are now all greenhouse level two. It's still the same layout uh, with you know the one pipe, the one conveyor in the middle. Now instead of having these crazy pipes all over there and a lot of conveyors going down, what I'm doing is I'm being a bit smarter, is I'm sending everything this way and I'm only making the mess over here. The mess actually starts over here. With two of these, it's really easy. I have the vegetable ones that's going into the vegetable storage. I have the fruit one that's going into the fruit storage. They don't mix, uh, that's not a problem. And even here, what I did is it's very easy. I have on that side, my two vegetable farms that go into uh, this one. And then on this side, I have my two fruit ones that go into this one. On the other hand, for the U-shaped one, I'm producing so many different things, right? Corn, soybean, sugarcane, canola, wheat, potatoes, and others. And all of this is mixed into one giant uh, conveyor. This is the level three, of course, to get as quickly as possible. I'm going to talk about it, but before I did want to show you one thing, which is if you look at my market, in the last episode, we are giving everything. Now I am not giving everything. I've decided to not give sausages. For sausages, you have a couple of options. Basically not give sausage all the time, but just give it from time to time and get from time to time some unity. I don't like that. I like to have something that is running sort of, you know, at the same level all the time. That's what I like. Now, if you want to give sausage all the time, you get into a bit of a pickle because your sausages feed less people than your meat, right? Which means that you'll need always more sausage than you need meat. The problem is that to make sausage, you need something from meat. To make sausage, you need the meat trimmings. And 
in this production here, we are making 15 meats, only six meat trimmings. So basically I did the math and to have enough sausages production, I needed to have a meat production that was four times what I actually needed, which means that then you're left with tons of meat that you don't have a lot of things to do. You can, the only thing you can do is then create food pack. But then if you want to make those food pack, you also need to increase a lot your bread and your snack production. And lastly, to be able to do that, this was actually a lot of chicken carcasses. This was way too many chicken carcasses. So basically I decided this is really not worth it. I don't know if they will change those ratio in the future, but right now I think sausage is really not something you want to do. You should just avoid it. And then basically what I did after is I used calculation, food consumption calculations to see how much food will I need when my whole city will be at level three housing. If you don't know how to predict your food consumption, don't hesitate to check in the video description below. I have made a video especially on that topic to help you predict your food consumption. With those 18 farms at greenhouse level two and with fertilizer, fertilizer actually at 100%, which is why you know I'm making now this fertilizer over here. I will be producing exactly what I need for all of these houses level three. And therefore then I build the exact you know, food complex needed to sustain this. So what is happening? Well, we have as always the sorters and if you don't know how the sorters work, I also have a video on my channel, so I need to check that. Start with the potato. Potato is going over here. It's actually going directly into this loose storage over here, unless this is full. And if this is full, it's going to go into those mixers. We'll talk about those in a second. Then if it's not potatoes, then it's the soybean, soybean is going over here. Then if it's not soybean, it's wheat, similarly you know, going into that one, or if it's full, going back to the mixers. Then the corn, first must go over here, to go both into my food processor for the snacks, and then also into that loose storage because people are eating the corn directly too. If it's full, once again, going to those mixers. And then we have two types of resources which can't go into the mixers. Because the mixers, they only transform potato, wheat, corn, and soybean into animal feed. They can't transform the last two. The last two being sugarcane, which goes into this one. There's a storage here and then goes into this one. And the last one is canola. Those two can't be transformed into animal feed. So for those two, you really do need to make sure that whatever you're producing, you can handle. And this is also why I have a storage because I basically want to make sure that if this gets full and even let's say 75%, I need to get an alert. That means there is a problem. Similarly over here, I put it actually for full, but let's put 75%. If this is getting full, you know, this is a problem. And then if this is full with this balancer, it goes down over here where it's going to be transformed into compost. This is also where I'm sending the biomass and the meat trimming that we're creating inside. I'll show you just now into again compost. So all of this is creating compost. The compost is then going all the way over here, joining with my wastewater. So this is what we're doing with the animal feed and you know, with the excess basically of resources. We have that water that we talked about before that's coming over here, going into my chicken. We need a lot of water, but also going into some of these. Now let's start looking at all of these. We have first the canola. The canola is used to make cooking oil and animal feed. The animal feed is going back into the system over here we just discussed. And then the oil will be used to some of these over here and then go all the way over here. Then we have the wheat that transform into flour and do those two because we need the flour for a couple of things. We need the flour for the bread over here is using bread plus water and but also for our cakes. This is why all three are next to each other. We're using the flour over here. Here we're also using the oil we just talked about. We're using sugar, eggs and fruits. So the only thing missing for the cake, again, is the sugar. Sugar is actually the next one over here. That's coming from the sugar cane and the water. So the sugar is going over here first to feed into my cake. And when this is full, it's going into this one. And the one we didn't talk about is the soybean. 
water, sulfur and limestone to make the tofu and animal feed. The sulfur is actually coming all the way from here from my scrubber. And then the last one is over here, the chicken. So the chicken carcasses are coming here. This is on level two. We can make our meat and the meat trimmings are going back all the way over here into my mixers. So this is the food production. We're making everything we need. Potatoes, corn, bread, meat, eggs, tofu, vegetables, fruits, snack, and cake. All of this is made over here. And as I said, the only thing that's important is we need to make sure that because we're producing a bit more cooking oil and a bit more sugar than what we need, this oil and this sugar needs to disappear somewhere. And this is what's happening over here. The sugar is transformed into ethanol with a bit of oxygen. This is why you have the air separator over here. And then this ethanol and the cooking oil is transformed into diesel. This diesel is going all the way over here into this. So actually, uh, remember we are making some diesel over here. I could, instead of uh, having a storage over here, maybe I should just send one pipe all the way here. So this way, all of the diesel we're making here as a sort of byproduct and here as a byproduct, we'll be able to go into this big storage. This big storage, I have a keep full, not the whole thing, just a bit. Why? Because as you can see, this diesel here is going to go into all my cargo. This way, I don't need any trucks. You know, this is all piped, piped all the way. And this way, this is always full and my cargoes never have to wait for some diesel. So yes, instead of this ugly production we had here with tons of belt, now we have three clean belts going you know, under this bridge and going over here into this. I mean, I know this is not perfect. There is of course still a number of belts. I can for sure make it a bit cleaner, but I think this is totally fine. I like it. It's working well. And as I said, this will enable me to feed my population today. Today, I don't have a problem up to the time where I have level three for all of these. So we're quite good on food for a while. Now here, all of the ethanol I'm making, I'm using directly, as we said, as a byproduct for the diesel, right? But I used to have ethanol uh, to create medication, medical supply, right? Now what I've decided is actually making a separate one. It's just one farm making corn. That corn is sent here to make some corn marsh corn marsh plus oxygen making ethanol, super compact. This is creating a bit of animal feed, sending the animal feed here, compost, compost we can jump. There's a bit of water that's needed both for the farm and for um, the mill over here, which is why I have just one groundwater. You know, this is definitely not going to tap into my supply. You usually can have two or three of these and not have a problem. So just one is not gonna be a problem at all. And then that way, you know, the ethanol is just going straight over here to uh, be transformed into disinfectant. If you see any other changes, you're wondering why I did something a certain way, of course, don't hesitate to put it in the comments below or join the Discord community. Love to hear your thoughts. Otherwise, I hope you like this episode. I hope you like where the city is going, definitely making a lot of progress. If you did, don't hesitate to smash the like button. It really does help, in particular for the YouTube algorithm, to know to share this video with more Captain of Industry fans out there. I'm still quite a small YouTuber, so every single one of those likes helps a lot. We're giving food to our people, but there are still many other things we can give them. For example, some household appliances, some computers later on, or consumer electronics. Once again, I hope you liked this episode and if you did, don't hesitate to press the like button. And I hope to see you next time for our next episode.